Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. All right. Unleavened bread. Let's get going, all right? Because we got a busy day here. All right, don't forget about the lack of food, okay? You shall eat nothing leavened in all your inhabitations. You shall eat unleavened bread. Deuteronomy 16, 16. One time in a year shall all males appear before the Most High Yah. You sure ain't got something in my eye? I'd like to see if my, my, my friend Pete Rambo is if he over in Israel right now. Now, see, most of you will say, what kind of talk is that? It's real talk. Because you, you, if you're going to tout that it says go up, then go up. Don't go up one time a year and say you're fulfilling the scripture. It says three times in a year. But see, the scripture also gives us instruction about what to do whenever we are in the dysphoria. Are we not in the diaspora right now? Are we not scattered among the heathens of this land? Is not y'all calling us out of the people of this land? Does he not? Anybody see the interview I did with Zion Lex? Was that not a beautiful interview? Now, as far as intelligence go, you men, you've got a litmus test sitting in front of you. That young man is something for you to strive after concerning intelligence and wisdom. That's a wise young man right there. He's young to me, but he may not be young to y'all. But you follow me? That's a wise man. You should actually try to develop a character, something similar to his. Because he is not only, see, that was a time that Zion Lex was only an Old Testament Hebrew that didn't believe in Yahshua. He had a debate with um, Divine Prospect. And this is the type of character that man has. He had a debate with Divine Prospect. He started putting two and two together and things together. And he says, you know what, you're right. Now he's a believer in the Messiah. My question to you is, do you have that type of integrity that if you're wrong about something, you would change? Are y'all listening to me? Do you have that type of integrity amongst you that you will change? Well, only you can answer that question. Hallelujah. Only you can answer that question, but that's something to strive for. So I'm not making a personal dig at Pete Rambo because, see, I understand where we're at. We're scattered. We're outside of our, our, our homeland. Because if we were in our homeland, a lot of stuff that goes on in Israel, it wouldn't be going on. Because we are righteous rulers and righteous judges and righteous men of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So three times in a year shall all males appear before Yahweh your Elohim in the, in the place which he shall choose. Oh boy. Uh-oh. The Feast of Unleavened Bread and the Feast of Weeks, and the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before Yahweh empty. Now, he who is blessed of Yahweh, Isaiah 31, 15, the one that is blessed of Yahweh is the one who walk righteously and speaketh uprightly, and he that despise the gain of oppression, that shaketh his hands from holding bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given to him. His water shall be sure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is afar off. All right. So now we're here about keeping the feast, right? We're getting ready to keep the feast. 
Blessed be the name of Yah, right? So, we're going to go over a couple of New Testament things here for a second. So, we're going to keep the Feast of Unliving Bread, all right? Oh, boy. What is it doing? That looks like a transition, don't it? Oh, boy, we're going to be transitioning for a while. Look at here, look at here. Unleavened bread, matzah. Unleavened bread without leaven, specifically an unfermented cake or loaf of the festival of Passover. Now, in the first month or the 14th day of the month at Eve, you shall eat unleavened bread until one of the 20th day of the month at Eve. Seven days there shall be leaven found, no, no leaven found in your houses. And who are still doing it today? Going around and clean up your houses and cupboards and everything else. Okay, so that was natural. That was symbolic of you, how meticulous you need to be for you, your body, spiritually. <laughs> See, we're dealing with types and shadows. Are you following me? Types and shadows. Are you following me? So, what you're reading here, you are the temple of Yah. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. What kind of house are you building him? So you need to be, when you read this, you need to be speaking and spanning your house, your temple. Because y'all don't dwell in a temple made with hands no more. He dwells within his people. Hallelujah. And then for those of you who ain't never been filled with the Holy Spirit, you better get the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't have his spirit, then you are none of his. Because usually when people have his Holy Spirit, they are lively people. And when you have his spirit, that's one thing about having his spirit. Oh, I don't want to detour too much, but it's one thing about having his spirit, though. When you have his spirit, you can't help but to praise. Praises. Exalt him and praises bring you down. Because your prideful flesh don't want to praise. It don't want to give glory to nobody. Hallelujah. So, let me admonish you, you need his Holy Spirit. You need his tongue-talking Holy Spirit. You need a power of Yah, which is the Holy Spirit. You need a real genuine Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And you know the Holy Spirit, it will, it will keep you from being tombstones and you'll be lively stones. Hallelujah. So seven days there shall be no leaven found in your houses for whosoever eat of that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. That's a lot of cutting off. That's a lot of cutting off in Israel. You shall eat nothing leaven in all your habitations. You shall eat unleavened bread because we're going to be eating unleavened bread here for the next seven days. All right? Oh, here we go again. Boy, we, whoo, we enduring here today, ain't we? We, we tra now we ain't transitioning that thing doing it alright there's the Greek uncorrupted unleavened that is uncorrupted unfermented free from leaven or yeast alright unleavened bread is artos in the Greek in the New Testament okay artos food composed of flick, uh, flour mixed with water baked the Israelites made it in the form of an oblong or round cake as thick as one's thumb as a large uh, and as large as a plate or platter, hence it was not to be cut off but broken. Often these loaves were consecrated to Yahweh at Yah's table. Hallelujah. <clears throat> all right, so that's leavened bread. We've been eating that all year, ain't we? All right, so we don't need to know. We Everybody know what leavened bread is, right? Okay. Yahshua gave his taught ones art toast, meaning leavened bread. He served leavened bread at what is commonly called the Lord's Supper. Now, we know it ain't bell supper. Are you following? We know it ain't bell supper, right? Or right. that's what they call it, Lord's Supper. Supper. Anyway, y'all understand, I know it's a hard transition listening to us sometimes because we have this English way engraving in us so much. So each morning, we should actually practice trying to remove the residue of this mess out of our minds. 
and start to think more concretely. Hallelujah. So listen real close. So as they were eating, Jesus took bread. Now this wasn't the Passover. He is the Passover. That's the key point in here. He is the, un he is the, un he is the Lamb of Yah that taketh away the sins of the world. The Lamb. Hallelujah. And worthy is the Lamb. And as they were eating bread, artos, meaning leaven, when you look behind that word bread, it means artos, or leaven. Oh, let me go back before we start doing it again, right? And blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Okay, so what he's doing, you already got a revelation coming up here, didn't you? Old Pastor Mir can't even hold himself up. He's like, yeah. That's one thing about Pastor Mir. He can't hide too good, man. He just, he can't hide nothing spiritually. He can't hide in general himself. He's too big of a I was just down there with Mother Carol. We was praising. I said, that is a mountain of a man. Can you imagine getting hit by him? Can y'all imagine on the football field getting hit by him and then he land on top of you? <laughs> Jesus. Woo! Seemed like your rib cage is in trouble. So the Lord's Supper, what they call the Lord's Supper, it's a different meal from the Passover meal. John 13, 1. Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should... Depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world. He loved them until the end. And supper being ended. It didn't say Passover being ended, right? It says supper being ended. The devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simeon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, that he was come from Yahweh and went to Yahweh. He rises from supper and laid aside his garment and took the towel and girded himself. Now, supper means dinner or feast, right? He rises from supper, laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. Now, the new covenant must follow the pattern that is written in the Torah. Is that right? Then he, look at this. I'm going to skip for a second. John 18, 28. So, here's Jesus. They led Jesus from, uh-oh, he's doing his own thing again. They led Jesus from Caiaphas until the hall of judgment. To the hall of what? Yes. Hall of judgment. What was the Passover lamb? The Passover lamb had to be judged, right? It had no spot, no wrinkle, no blemish. It had to be perfect. Is that right? The hall of judgment. And in that hall, what did they do? He kept on questioning them over and over and over and over again, judging them. Couldn't find no fault. He said, I find no fault. Is that right? And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall. See, the scribes and Pharisees wouldn't go into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled, but they, they might what? Eat the Passover. Now, y'all watch this. This thing is so corrupt and stuff. Pastor Rufus actually wanted to come here and do this stuff during the Passover. Am I? We said, are you out of your mind? First of all, you don't get to dictate what we do anyway. But you definitely ain't going to do it here during the Passover. Why? If, the, if they didn't want to be defiled so they can eat the Passover, what you want to do? Defile the whole congregation? So there are certain benchmarks and safety measures we have to put up. No, 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 no. Shut up. We ain't doing it your way. I don't know what's going on, man, but this spirit is something else. It's got me up here halfway upside down. Judgment that they could not go into the hall because it would have been defiled so they couldn't keep the Passover. Now, first, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he have made him to be sin for us. Did y'all hear that? Now, y'all think about this for a second. All right? That thing moving. Y'all see what I'm doing up here? He have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of Yah and him. Y'all understand that? So think about this for a second. Here's Jesus born in the world, Yahshua, born in the world. Unlike us, he didn't come from a sinful father. The father is his father. Are you following me? All of us been born of a woman. We were born in sin, shaping in iniquity. He went his whole life 
and never committed one sin. Watch this. Hold on. Hold on for a second. He was tempted in all points, yet without. Do you know the reason why he had to be tempted in all points? So that you could be made the righteousness of Yah. Anybody understand that? So he had to overcome every single sin so that you could have access to the Father. But the only sin that can ever be forgiven is the sin that is repented. The sin that is acknowledged before the Father. Are you following me? So what Yah did, like it says in the book, he laid the, in Isaiah 53, he laid the iniquity of the world, all of us, upon him. And then it says over in the book, and by his stripes, we are healed. Are you getting this, right? So he was doing more. He was doing more than just sitting up here running around singing kumbaya like other people think and stuff. Hey, he had a lot going on. A lot going on. Now, you have to understand, when it came time, when it came time for him to set his face towards Jerusalem, he did it like a real man. When he set his face toward Jerusalem, he had all his disciples in mind. He had you in mind. Are y'all hearing me? So when he was going to that tree, he full well knew what he was doing. Hallelujah. So when Messiah hung on that tree, he was made sin for us because he himself knew no sin. He gave us the ability to have the access to the Father himself because of the sacrifice that he made himself. He was made sin in his body. His body represented sin. Our sins he took Leaven bread and leaven is sin, right? In Isaiah 53, 6, he says, And all we are like sheep gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And Yahweh have laid upon him the what? The lawlessness, the iniquity of us all. Is that right? Now, Jesus, he was our Passover lamb when he died on the tree. All right? Purge out, the instructions is, the old leaven that you may be a what? Every single year, we get a chance to be not like the person we were the year before. Every year, we get an opportunity to be new in his eyes. But you have got to be instrumental in purging out Every piece of leaven, everything that puffs up, everything that's prideful, everything that exhausts itself. Are you following me? So that you may be a new lump. As you are unleavened for even Messiah, our Passover is what? Sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the what? Not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice, wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of and For I have received of the Messiah... That which I also delivered unto you, that the Messiah, Yahshua, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in what? Remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. 
This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do so for the Messiah's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Messiah unworthy shall be guilty of the what? Body and the blood of Messiah. See, you have to understand, if you go in tonight and you take this Passover and you bring over the, the leaven from last year and you bring it up to this right here, you're going to be guilty of the body and blood. You're trying to taint the blood of Messiah. And if you're going to be guilty of the blood, remember, the whole thing that Yahshua said and he, or the, the, the uh, emissaries, all of them said, is when I, he said when he sees the blood, he's going to do what? Pass over you. What Moses said, when he sees the blood, he's going to do what? Pass over you. He has to see the pure blood, the blood that's been repented of. He has to see the blood that's been applied to you because you trust in the redemptive work of the Messiah. And this you can't earn. You got to have this all by faith. You got to believe. Are you following? So you don't want to partake of this unworthy. You want to make sure that you're going off into this new year, a different man, a different woman. Hallelujah. But let every man, so let every man get the spirit out of another man. It says, let every man examine who? And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Messiah's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many do what? Sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Messiah, that we should not be condemned with the what? With the world. Now, this, this world of ours. Now see what I got up there, right? This, this world of ours. This earth of ours right here, right? Well, maybe it's going to do something. Understanding this. Hate for us by those who claim to be Israel. John 15, 18 said, if the world hate you. How many of y'all experience hate from your father and your mother, your sister and your brother and your family members when you come this way? Guess what? You're on the right path then, ain't you? I have never seen nothing like it before in my life. You could run the streets. They still love you. You could be a whore, a whoremonger. They still love you. You could steal from them, lie, cheat. They still love you. You could get stranded and they will drive clear across town to come and get you. You come to Messiah, they don't want a damn thing to do with you. You start keeping the commandments, they don't want nothing to do with you. Is it really you they hating or is it someone else? Don't the book say greater is he that is in you than he that is what? In the world. So if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Now this is another thing I couldn't wrap my mind around. Man, people love perfect people, truthful people, honest people, don't you? You don't have to have your guard up around them. You can just be open, right? But then they put the most perfect, the most honest, the most truthful man that ever lived to death. So if they hated him, they hated, they hated you, they hated him, but, but, or they hated, if the world hate you, know that it hated me before it hated you. Hallelujah. If you are of the world, the world will love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you.
You know, as the old saying go, you got to have haters. You got to have haters. Remember the word that I said unto you that the servant is not greater than his master. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep your sayings also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the world might be fulfilled, that the word might be fulfilled, that it is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. Now, we're getting ready to take this Passover. All right? We got to make sure that the blood of the covenant wherewith we were sanctified doesn't become an unholy thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's just as simple as even walking down the street and saying, Father, please forgive me for this repetitive behavior I've done so many times over the years. I apply the blood to the doorpost of my heart. I apply it to the sides of my heart. Purge me, wash me, cleanse me with hyssop and make me clean. Wash me and make me whole, y'all. And somebody say, can it be that simple? Yes. Because it takes faith for you to be able to say it. It takes faith to be able to admit that you need the Savior. You need to be redeemed. So when Yahshua was being impaled on that tree, he did it for every single one of us. Individual. That's how much love that the Father has for each and every single one of us. He left us the most perfect, holy example that there is, and the message, 2,000 years old from the Messiah, 6,000 years old from Moses, is still powerful today. That's why Satan don't want you to hear it. Because he don't want you to redeem. He don't want you to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. There's an old song. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, filled with the Holy Ghost I am. All my sins are washed away, I've been redeemed. Hallelujah! <laughs> so, we're going to have baptism at, at 2.15. 215, baptism. Anybody want to be baptized? What you do is you, you go down this road right here. Then you make a right. And you keep on going until you see some saints clapping their hands and singing. Take me to the water. Oh, pass down. That's Christian. It's still good words. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. And baptize.
baptize me in the name of Jesus Yahshua Holland Machine. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we ain't no problem. Glory to the King. And then we're going to eat at 3 o'clock. Then we're going to be back here and again at 6 o'clock to get ready. I'll tell you what. Will you come on in? Come on in with your shoes on, and then we can take them off when we get ready to um, take the pass off, right? Now, for those of you, believe me, we have an unlimited water supply around here. You don't have to go down there and get baptized with water just to make yourself clean if you've already been baptized. You can take your, your toes and your feet and whatever everything else you hadn't done to them, take your shoes on, go walk in that creek right down there. Make sure you prepare that you don't oppress your brother and sister. You know, oppression is also against the law too. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, after we get finished with that, the next following night, time to tear down Satan's kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to the king. Also, it's a real good opportunity for some of you to get filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Y'all sit down for one more minute, all right? So, fasting. Remember, we've been talking a lot about prayer and fasting. A lot of times we have been unbalanced. We did a lot of prayer and no fasting. Or a lot of times we did a lot of fasting and no prayer. But prayer coupled with fasting. All right? So, Usually about day two, first day your body's too busy going through all this. Usually at the end of day two, getting ready to go into day three, all right, before you go into day three, that's the perfect time for you to get in your closet and talk to Yah. Because see, what's going to happen is, is all of a sudden you're going to find out, oh boy, he is close. Not only is he close, then all of a sudden you realize why your flesh is dying all of a sudden, you can feel him in your presence now. So while you're fasting, don't forget prayer and fasting. They work synonymous, okay? I'm telling you, before you get off into day three, you need to have a nice talk with him. You're going to feel, the, you're going to feel how much alive he is. You're going to feel the power of y'all inside of you. He's resonating. By the time you get to day three, you pretty much don't want nothing to eat anyway. That's when you're really on a plane, a higher level. That's a perfect time to make sure you're meditating on his precepts. Perfect time to be quoting and saying his word. Because what you're doing is you're building up yourself. You're loading yourself up so that you can be ready to perform the work of the kingdom. Doing miracle signs and wonders. All in his name. Are you following me? Keeping a good relationship because when your flesh is weak, then he is strong. So if I'm, I got anybody around me that I know as fast as something, usually at the end of day two, I tell them, go on there and talk to y'all for a second and watch and see what takes place. I usually don't tell them, watch here. I wait till they come out. I say, how was that? <laughs> hey, woo Woo. So let me tell you something, man. The flesh don't want to, but the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hallelujah. Well, we need more than anything. Now, listen, I don't want everybody fasting that we all become anorexic around here, okay? Because I know there's a lot of us, we've been some fasting machines, man, because now we're starting to get addicted to what we're feeling in y'all. Mm -hmm. We're starting to say, man, I feel that anointing. No, it's like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. If you ain't did any, don't, don't worry about it. We know what we're talking about. We know what we're talking about. 
See, if I come up here and lay hands on you, it ain't going to be no Benny Hinn shit. It's going to be the real deal. Hallelujah. You won't be flapping around like a bunch of chickens either. But you're going to feel that power of y'all, though. Don't everybody want to feel the power of y'all? He gave us the keys to the kingdom. So I'm telling y'all, man, when y'all start fasting and praying, man, fasting and praying, fasting and praying, believe y'all for whatever you've been believing them for. Believe it even the more so. Make it part of your prayer life. Make it your mission, all right? Because you don't see people... Uh, doing too many miracles at all in Yah's name, in Yahshua's name, who don't fast. If you want to be a tool and be used of Yah, get accustomed to fasting and praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> fasting and praying. Because we need him, all right? All right, with that, let us stand, Israel. I enjoyed y'all, man. I am enjoying y'all. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so what time is baptism? What time is dinner? What time is Passover? At least that's where we're going to start. Because by the time we get finished getting in, up, then by the time nightfall here, we'll be into it. will be good to go, right? All right, so y'all make sure y'all spend this day meditating, getting your hearts right for the most high y'all, all right? Glory to the king. Y'all got anything? All right, let the words of my mouth, meditation in our heart, be acceptable in our sight. Oh, y'all, my strength, my redeemer. You dismiss in the magnificent name of y'all, sure to harm us yet. Shabbat shalom, Israel, King coming. Look at him looking.